In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a general physical examination of the dog. Barley has agreed to help us out with this demonstration. <clears throat> and we're going to start our physical exam by um, observing her without, um, without touching her. We're going to watch her get up from a lying down position, move around. <clears throat> and what we're looking for, probably can you get up? We're looking for any lameness, incoordination, um, ataxia, her ability to see. We're listening for any scuffing of the feet, things like that. Her comfort level, does her posture suggest that she's comfortable, she's stiff anywhere. So I usually start with this um, either in a hallway or in the exam room, but it's nice to have a little bit more space to watch them watch them move around. So next we're going to start our um, hands-on examination. You can either do this on an exam table or you can do it um, on the floor. And it's really a matter of preference. For small dogs, I'll put them on the table. For larger dogs, I'll do this uh, with myself kneeling um, on the floor. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make friends with my patient. And so, <clears throat> hey girl, how you doing? So with her, it's really quite easy. She's a, a, a nice dog. This is my dog, so she's very familiar with me. So um, she's not nervous. Uh, but a lot of your patients uh, might be a little bit nervous, and you may need to apply a muzzle. And so, Marley, can you stand up? Let's go. Let's go. Can you stand up? Let's go. Okay. So to apply a muzzle, <clears throat> The element of surprise is, is somewhat important. And so if you come from behind and adjust the strap. So this obviously prevents them or helps pre prevent them from biting you. It also gives them a, something to think about other than what you're doing to them. The first part of my exam, I'm going to start with the head and I'm going to check for facial symmetry. So I'm going to look and I'm also going to feel, I'm going to run my hands along the muzzle, along the mandible, along the maxilla, up around the orbit. I'm going to press over the eyes gently. I'm going to feel on top of the head. So I'm feeling for any asymmetry that might suggest that there's a swelling, a mass, and I'm also noting if there's any um, discomfort when I do that. Next I'll look at the eyes, and I'll note if there's any epiphora or staining discharged from the eyes. I'll also notice if there's any blepharospasm or squinting from the eyes. I'll bring the lid back, I'll look at the sclera, I'm going to note any discoloration. I'm also looking at the conjunctiva, the cornea, the iris. I'm also going to check for a, a pu pupillary light reflex. I want to see pupil constriction with application of a light. The light also helps look inside at the conjunctiva and the sclera. Next, I'll move my way down to the nose. I'm going to look at the nares. I'll note any discharge. If I have any concern about airflow, then I'll take a Q-tip and um, see if there's any movement of the cotton as I place it next to the nair. Or I can use a microscope slide to see if it fogs um, when placing up next to the nares. Next comes the mouth. And the first part is I'm going to put my fingers, I'm going to lift up. I'm going to look at <clears throat> the gingiva, the cheeks. I'm looking for any discoloration. I'm looking and I'm checking a capillary refill time by pressing on the gingiva and noting how long it takes to go from blanched to normal. I'm looking at the teeth, noting any 
Calculi, tartar, looking at the gums, noting any gingivitis. Checking for cracked teeth, missing teeth. So she has a missing upper right canine. She also has some missing incisors. And you usually only get one or two peaks inside the mouth when you open their mouth. So make sure you have good lighting. Point their nose sort of towards the ceiling. And I think it's easy to grip right behind the canines. Open up the mouth, take a look, lick way back there, lift up the tongue. So it was a short glimpse, but I feel like I was able to see everything, including the tonsils, the palate, uh, the tongue underneath the tongue. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to look at the pinna of each ear. I'm going to note any discoloration, any discharge at the external ear canal opening. I'm also going to palpate the external ear, ear canals gently. They should be firm, but they should be somewhat compressible on the outside and they, sh they should not be painful. If they're firm, mineralized, painful, that could be an indication of inflammation, infection. Next, I'm going to do my otoscopic examination. So every dog's a little bit different in how they tolerate this examination. And some dogs won't tolerate it much, and you may need to sedate them. So what I'll do is I'll hold the pin up. I'll bring the cone in, bring it down through the vertical ear canal. Then I'll lever it to look down that horizontal ear canal and into the, see the tympanum. <clears throat> yeah. Let's move over here. Yeah. Good girl. Yeah, you're just going to lie down, aren't you? That's okay. We can do that. Yes. Okay. Okay, we're done with that. I didn't get a great view inside of uh, that right ear. So if I'm concerned about anything, I may require a little bit of sedation to take a deeper look. Now I'm going to continue my examination by palpating the mandibular lymph nodes. So they're at the corner of each side of the mandible. I'm going to work my way down and feel the larynx, feel the area of the thyroid glands, which usually are not palpable, feel the trachea, and I'll come down to where the neck meets the thorax. I'll feel the prescapular lymph nodes. And the prescapular lymph nodes are just cranial to the distal part of the scapula. They're not always palpable. And then I'll run my hands down the front limbs and I'll do this simultaneously because that allows me to appreciate any asymmetry. If there's muscle atrophy, if there's any lumps or bumps. If there was any concern while watching uh, Barley walk around, and I was concerned about a limp or a neurological problem, I'll do a full orthopedic examination. I'll pick up the feet, look at the pads, look at the nails, digits. Then I'll work my way back, running my hands over the thorax. And again, I'm feeling for any kind of uh, masses, areas of discomfort. And now I'm going to do my thoracic auscultation. I'm going to use the diaphragm part of my stethoscope. And I'm going to feel for the point of maximum intensity of a palpable heartbeat. So I use my left hand here, I feel for that. And that's where I'm going to put my stethoscope, because I know that that is going to be 
the apex of the heart so I can hear the mitral valve the best there. If I move a little bit dorsal and a little bit cranial, I should be centered over the aortic valve. And then a little cranial yet is the pulmonic valve. As I listen to the heart, I'm also palpating with my right hand the femoral pulse. I'm noting any pulse deficits and also the strength of each pulse. If I'm having a hard time hearing heart sounds, it might be necessary just to have the patient stop panting. So you can bring your hand up like this and just sort of point their nose up in the air a little bit. Some people think it's a little easier to do auscultation, standing over the patient. I'm now going to auscultate the right side listening for the tricuspid valve. Now I'll do my pulmonary auscultation. I'll slide my stethoscope more dorsal and move around the area of the chest, listening to lung sounds. Now it's easiest if, uh, to do this while they're standing. And so you may have to work at this to get a compliant patient. Marley, can you stand there? And so you can support with one hand underneath to try to get them to, to stay standing. Okay, now I'm going to continue my examination by bringing my hands down to the abdomen, feeling for any subcutaneous masses. Um, I'm going to pay particular attention to the mammary glands, seeing if I feel any. The mammary glands run from mid-thorax all the way down to the inguinal region, so you want to do a thorough exam of the mammary glands. Next, I'm going to palpate uh, the abdomen. And I think the easiest way to do this is to stand behind the patient while they're standing. I'm going to use my fingertips of each hand and I'm going to press them together. And I'm going to um, let, move my fingers and let the organs sort of fall in between my fingers. So you can kind of appreciate them as they slip between your fingers. So in the cranial abdomen, you may be able to palpate the caudal edge of the liver. And in the ventral cranial abdomen, you may palpate the spleen. It's sort of a firm uh, organ. Dorsally, you might be able to palpate the kidneys. Mid-abdomen, you can palpate the intestines, not necessarily individually, but you can, uh, you can feel loops of bowel slip between your fingers. And then caudally, um, if the bladder is full, you can palpate the urinary bladder. You also want to note if there's any discomfort um, during this examination. <clears throat> now I'm going to run my hands down the hind limbs of the patient. Again, simultaneously, left and right, noting any muscle atrophy. And I'm going to lift the tail up. I'm going to look at the anus. I'm going to look at the vulva. You may have to spread the skin apart to, to see. 
I'm noting any discharge. <clears throat> um, and I'm, I'm going to want to do a body condition score. And so to do that, I, I palpate the spine and I look at the abdomen and there are some charts available that help you match up um, each patient and how they palpate, how they appear to a, a body condition score. The last two things I'm going to do uh, is to take a, a rectal temperature and I'm going to do a, um, a digital rectal exam. So Sally's going to come in and help me out with that. She's going to help restrain barley, the front end. <clears throat> I'm going to put a glove on with some lube. So dogs vary um, in how well they tolerate this. Um, so you might find that some patients actually may need to be, they won't tolerate it. And so just go slow. I'm going to advance my finger. If this is a male dog, I want to go in and I want to feel the prostate if I can. And I'm feeling uh, for symmetry of the prostate get an appreciation for how big it is and also to see if it's painful. I'm also feeling if there's any rectal um, masses. And then I'm going to feel for the anal sacs. And I won't typically express the anal sacs unless there's a specific problem with the anal sacs or glands. I want to uh, palpate them though to make sure I'm not feeling any masses, making sure that they're, they're not enlarged or painful. And then when I come out, I want to check and make sure I don't see any blood on my glove, parasites, things like that. I also want to inspect the skin and uh, the hair coat. I'll note any areas of alopecia. I'll spread the hair apart and look at the skin. I'm looking for parasites. I'm looking for abnormalities such as papules, pustules, collarettes, hyperpigmentation. And it's not enough to just do the dorsum of the dog. You also need to do the ventrum of the dog. Barley, can you lay down? Can you lay down? Lay down. All the way. Good girl. Good girl. There are a lot, of, uh, a lot of conditions that manifest itself only in the ventrum of the dog, and so you need, to, you need to look underneath. So again, I'm looking for papules, pustules, flakiness, epidermal cholerets, parasites. It's also a good time to double check the mammary glands. And then once you're done with your examination, um, you can repeat your hands-off examination, watch them move around the room. If I have any concerns about uh, a lameness or some neurological abnormalities, then I'll do a more thorough neurological examination or orthopedic examination. If I have concerns about a, an ocular problem, then um, I'll do a more uh, complete ophthalmologic examination. That concludes the general physical exam of the canine.